what do we have here? We have a chassis that can hold a hard disk and one or two floppy. The hard disk can be either 20 megabyte, 40 megabyte, or 80 megabyte. Just a, a few comments on the 40 and 80 megabyte drive. They both are five and a quarter half flight uh, inch drive, and they have an access time on the 30 millisecond, which is very fast. That allows us to transfer over 1.2 megabyte per second over our SCSI mm -hmm. interface, mm -hmm. and that will uh, really give us a great speed when it comes to open applications, save large files, etc. So let me just put that away and show you the most uh, important part of uh, this computer. Now, as you can see, all we have left in here is the power supply, which is 250 watts, provides a lot of power for both the logic board, the slots, and the hard disk. And we have the most important part, as I said, which is this uh, logic board. So the, the logic board contains the O2O and the 68881 arithmetic coprocessor. The O2O is the next generation processor from Motorola after the 68000, which is used in the Macintosh Plus and the Macintosh SC. It's a full 32-bit uh, processor, such as the um, Intel 386, for instance. That allows us to get a speed increase over the Macintosh Plus up to four times, I would say. And then we decided to add as a standard this arithmetic chip. And I will show you what, what this arithmetic chip can do for us. Here we have the six new bus slots, and I already told you uh, a few things about the new bus slots. Another characteristic of new bus is that it allows a card in any slot to take over the entire mm -hmm. machine. That's called the bus mastership capability. So in the future, when we see new processors coming on the market, you could put a card here with an O3O, for instance, or any other kind of processor, and have this uh, very fast processor take mm -hmm. over the, mm -hmm. the whole machine. Now, this machine is a Macintosh, and as every Macintosh, it has all kinds of, of ports built in. We have a SCSI port here, two serial ports, uh, two Apple desktop bus port, which allows us to, to, con to connect um, input devices, and, and a sound port. So what this means is you can have a machine with, as I showed you, a 40 megabyte, 80 megabyte drive, two floppies, uh, one tape backup connected mm -hmm. outside the modem, and yet you have only used one slot. So six slots should, should, be, um, should be many for most of our users. Didi, I want to make sure we have time to actually okay. see it runs. So I'm going to ask you to turn to the software okay. now and, and actually run the two for us and give us a little demo. Right, so all that great hardware gives us first great speed. Let me just show you what we'll do with current applications. I mentioned word, word, um, spreadsheets, word processor, etc. This is a, a, a Mac Paint. And I'm going to show you what I can do here with a, with a graphic, uh, graphic document. Here I can move this document. It's a fairly complicated document, lots of data here. And you see the speed at which I can move all these uh, bits on the screen. And that's due to the speed of the uh, 68020 and as well to the speed of our graphics routine mm -hmm. contained in, in QuickDraw. And basically, we'll see the same result on all the current applications, whether they're spreadsheet, databases, etc. We'll see increased speed and as well the ability to use a larger screen. This is a 13-inch screen. This is one of the two screen monitors available for this machine, 12 and, and 13-inch. But now, as I said, this machine will touch new markets. And let me show you a few of the components that will allow us to get into new markets. This is a demonstration of the power of the 68881 arithmetic processor. I'm drawing this equation, sinus x plus 0.75 sinus 2x, and that's the speed at which I would draw this equation without the arithmetic chip. Now, if I switch and go directly to the arithmetic chip, here is what happens. Mm -hmm. We get speed up to 200 times. So that will allow the Macintosh software to get into areas where it couldn't get up to now for lack of, of horsepower. Now we're going to see programs, for instance, using 3D rotations mm -hmm. um, coming, coming up on the Mac, modeling programs, etc. So we'll just stop, stop this and go to another um, of the feature of the, of the Macintosh 2, which as well will, um, will push the Macintosh 2 into new areas. Let me turn this monitor here from black and white to color. One important point about this monitor is its, uh, its resolution is so high that it can be used for both black and white and color. Uh, I might mention, D.D., our audience is not really seeing this monitor right. in its true quality. They're seeing a flicker because of the television camera shooting it. That's not the way it really right. looks. Right. It, it's due to the high refresh rate, actually, of the monitor, which is one of the reasons why it, it looks so good. This is an application which allows me to display digitized picture. Let me just uh, bring up one of um, our uh, vice president here our chief operating officer. He paid you to get his picture on the show? <laughs> no, not quite, actually. He has uh, another picture, which is his favorite, but I won't be able to show it to you. Too. You see the speed at which I could move this, this image here, okay? And, and I'm moving here eight, eight bits, what's called eight, eight bits per, um, per pixel. I have actually, here I'm using the full power 
of the card, the 256 colors out of a palette of 16 million. That's what allows me, for instance, to have this smooth shading from, from color to color. Let me show you just another image that uh, shows out the capability of, of the screen. Fortunately, uh, as you said, we, because the, uh, our yeah. users, viewers won't be able to, uh, to, to see it quite right, but this is a ray tracing image. It's a computer-generated image where you set up your environment and, and uh, the computer... Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to interrupt okay. you because we're out of time. It's a very impressive very demo. Impressive. Real quickly, what's the price on the Mac 2? What's the range? Um, the entry price is, is $38.95 for uh, the entry CPU. The color computer that I have here with a 40 megabyte hard disk would cost you about $6,500. Thank you very much. Okay, when a new piece of hardware comes out, the first question is, is there software to take advantage of it? Wendy Woods has a report on the status of new software for the new Macs. If users wonder about software availability, the problem is magnified for software developers who risk losing big money if a machine isn't successful. Living Video Text was one of a few dozen companies that received prototypes of the SE and the Mac II. They immediately went to work upgrading their more idea processor to utilize the Mac II's color. But unlike decisions they've made in the past, the decision to support the new Macs was easy. Well, I think you have to look at it from two angles. One is the economics of it. Uh, do you think the machine is going to be successful in the marketplace? Does it answer the needs that the users have? You know, those are the, the very simple uh, an analytic decisions. The other side of it, you gotta, you've got to be somewhat emotional about it. And for me, the Mac 2, as a Macintosh user myself, the Mac 2 was virtually everything that I had wanted on my wish list. And I found my heart going pitter-patter every time I thought about the idea of putting one of those on my desk. And so I knew for, for, for that reason, that, for both reasons actually, that it, was, that it was important that we support the machine and that we develop software for it. The SE can run virtually all current Macintosh software, so there's no shortage there. And developers see the expandability of the Macintosh 2 as its ticket to success, an open road for other companies to develop add-on products and new software. So most developers aren't worried and say that users will have plenty of software from which to choose as soon as the new 2s are coming off the assembly line as quickly as these SEs. In Fremont, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. With us in the studio now is our resident analyst, Jan Lewis, and also our very own curmudgeon and commentator, George Morrow. Jan, from a consumer standpoint, we have a whole range of machines you can buy from Apple. Which one of these things should you buy? Just Dis disregarding price, which one should you buy? Well, if or you how really you decide you're going to buy okay. which one you're going to buy? It, clearly, you cannot disregard price. Otherwise, everybody would get the Mac 2. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, what you need to look at is what you want out of your system and how long you want it to last. Uh, the Mac SE right now is a very big seller. People who were buying the Pluses are now buying the SE. Eventually, of course, they're going to want to expand even more. So eventually, they're going to want expansion boxes. If you know that you're going to expand quite a bit, if you know you're going to use a lot of color, if you know you need a lot of the graphics, uh, you might go to the Mac 2. Uh, desktop publishing, for instance, I think probably the Mac SE is a better bet. Uh, and if you look at some of the, let's say, peripheral monitors, for instance, that are coming out uh, for desktop publishing versus, let's say, for desktop video or for the graphics mm -hmm. um, area other than that, you'll find the SE seems to be more of a uh, desktop publishing machine. Mm -hmm. But the Mac 2 is, is um, highly expandable, and you'll get many, many years of enjoyment out of it. Okay. Okay, George, you've seen the SE and the 2. What do you think about these new computers? Well, I think the 2 is an expression of um, a lot of market envy. You've got Apple that has seen IBM do so well and the corporations and the add-on people do so well. You're looking at an expression now of, gee, how do we get a piece of that action? They've come up with a new bus and they've come up with color. And I, I think what's going on now is a fantastic musical game of chairs. Everybody is moving over into the position of what everybody else was doing a year ago. And it's going to be a lot of fun watching what happens. Jan, what do, you, what do you think about this battle, uh, uh, Macintosh trying to get into the IBM, the, the corporate, the business market? Is that going to work? I think it's already working uh, through the desktop publishing. Yeah. It's already working, even though when you talk to the corporations and they say who is on our approved list, you will not find the Macintosh there. Yet you walk up and down the halls of the corporations mm -hmm. and there's no questions the Macintoshes are there. Um, so I think already what they're doing is uh, a very good wedge into the corporation and this will take them much farther. Apple has also done an awfully good job in networking, and that's probably another edge that they have in the corporation that's got them a mm -hmm. leg up. 
What about the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, George, you have a particular hardware expertise, and there's uh, always questions, how is a 386 going to stack up against the 68020 in terms of uh, just a horse race? Raw processing power, they're very similar in, in power, but from what the fellows that have used it, the Cognoscenti, seem to think there's a lot more overhead in the Mac 2 than there is in the present 386 machines, so the effective speed is somewhat lower. But both processors have got a lot of horsepower, and of course, the engineering workstation market is mm -hmm. now going to be an awfully exciting market, not only to buy products from, but to do that's, software That certainly seems like a good place for the oh, Mac, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jan, uh, last question. What about this change in philosophy Gary was talking about earlier? We heard about the closed Mac, and that was the whole yeah. philosophy of mm -hmm. Apple Mac, and all of a sudden it's the total opposite. Is this sort of the end of the Steve Jobs era for good? I think that's definitely the end of the Steve <laughs> Jobs era, as far as that goes. Uh, on the other hand, the one problem they're going to have as a result of being more open is there are going to be clones. Yes. Whereas with the old Mac, there weren't clones. So the one good legacy of Jobs is that uh, it was unclonable. Mm -hmm. I think in the long run, of course, Apple comes out ahead. Whoever clones it are going to come out ahead, and the consumer is going to come out ahead. Jan, George, thank you very much. That's about all the time we have for our look at the new Macintoshes. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's Computer News. sitting in for Stuart Chaffee this week. Some West German computer hackers have tapped into NASA's secret files. They were able to gain unlimited access to information on the Challenger and rocket boosters. The computer buffs took advantage of a flaw in the computer security system. They were able to change all the information in the files, including data on at least 20 NASA computers. Rico, the Japanese maker of cameras and photocopiers, has added another impressive tool to its inventory. The manufacturer has combined a photocopier with a scanner and shrunk the unit down to book size. But what really makes this copier interesting to computer users is a digital attachment that can store scanned images in digital form. The Army is getting a hand from a new voice operated expert system called the Automated Intelligence Maintenance System, or otherwise known as AIM. AIM will help the Army to maintain their vehicles. It will ask the mechanic questions. The mechanic then answers yes or no. Once AIM figures out the problem, it displays diagrams on its computer screen. AIM has an input vocabulary of 12 words, but an unlimited output vocabulary. AIM can maintain helicopters, fixed wing aircraft, and other mechanical and electronic systems. It's time now for this week's software review. Here's Paul Schindler. Come into my laboratory, or better yet, come into the laboratory of Dark Castle, a nifty new Macintosh arcade game. It has animation, it has sound effects, it has a sense of humor. Everything but color, and now that the Mac has color, I'm sure Dark Castle will too. This game is a tough one to play. What we're showing you here is the automated demonstration. You walk in with a certain number of lives and some rocks to throw at the creatures attacking you from all sides. And you walk out, if you're lucky, with your hide. Dark Castle runs on the Apple Macintosh and costs $50 from Silicon Beach Software in San Diego. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. The computer industry is responsible for creating new jobs, devices, technologies, and lots of new words. More than a thousand in the last decade. The new Random House Dictionary, hot off the press, shows computer-related words make up the greatest number of entries. In fact, Random House says it's since it first published the dictionary 20 years ago, computer-related words outnumber other topics by a wide margin. The closest competitor turned out to be new words related to food and cooking. Gallaudet University plans to launch a program teaching written English to deaf students. The project will use networked computers and allow students to carry on conversations at workstations arranged in ring-like local area networks. The instructor communicates with the students online. Students in turn can speak with the teacher or each other in the same manner. The project can open up a new world to deaf students, traditionally taught sign language, which has a different grammatical structure than spoken English. The Commerce Department's Bureau of Standards has a new way to fight fires, this time with a computer. It's called Hazard One. This system creates a fire and observes its development, but it's all on paper. Hazard One figures out the amount of gas and smoke a fire would generate in a small house. It also plots out the likely actions of the occupants based on interviews with people who have survived fires. Unlike other systems, Hazard One considers many more factors that may influence the outcome of the fire. Physics, chemistry, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, biology, toxicology, and human behavior. And considering all these factors may save more lives. 
Holland's version of our own FBI has decided to wait out the software age. Its computer system delighted in confusing the good guys with the bad. Wanted list included names of innocent citizens. The software remains unnamed and in Holland's police department, unwanted. That's it for Computer Chronicles for this week. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 and 2400 baud modems. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Leading Edge, leading the way to the information age. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles cover the latest in microcomputer technology throughout the world. Byte, the international standard. Thank you.